in the last few games for Chicago in terms of killing the penalties. All the way back down ice it goes. 17-13 to go in this second period. 139 on the high stick penalty to Kevin McDonald. Here's Snell. Watch out for Chris Snell. He'll quarterback this power play. They miss Rob Brown, though. Here he's up with the LA Kings. He did not play. He did not dress, we were told, in last night's game. 3-3 tie with Toronto as the NHL was welcomed back. Here's Snell giving it up to the right point. They miss Cowie here because he works the other point. Top of the circle, back out, right point. Straub works it around. Power play on here for Phoenix. 2-1 Chicago leading the turn on by Bessie is blocked. Dug out. Chicago comes away. Short-handed, that was Malte, not a Berglund. And the flip goes back the other way. It'll kill some clock here. 55 seconds left in the man advantage for the Roadrunners. Well, right there, Mick Kempfer makes a great defensive play by standing his ground in front of the net and keeping the man on between the, the opposition net and himself, not letting him get in behind him in front of his goaltender. And that was just a great job right there, and, not, and they end up throwing the puck down the ice. Kevin Brown fires it in around the boards. Well behind Wendell Young. Rivers checks his man along the far side. Chevalier out of the point shot and Wendell Young stares out from wide. Along the boards near side, turned out by Lee Davidson, Gina Briaco really mixing up his penalty killers, especially up top. Fresh players out there. I mean, Todd Gillingham's getting some penalty killing time. It's good to see that Gene's certainly using all his players because they have two games in two nights and even because of the layoff. Gillingham trying to get it away now in the squad. Nice. Dug out by Phoenix. This Perot shot out at the right point. Up high, and Wendell Young, I thought, had it tied up, but I still think he does. No one saw it. He does have a tied up. He fell down inside his uh, locker glove there. And a great kill by the Wolves right there. It certainly keeps them uh, focused now where they've got to regroup again now and start back against them there. So far in the second period, they haven't really done that. A reminder, the good seats are available for upcoming Chicago Wolves games. To be a part of a crowd like this, call Ticketmaster at 312-559-1212. Or in person, you can come out and pick up the tickets at the Rosemont Horizon box office or Chicagoland locations of Carson Perry Scott, Blockbuster Music, Rose Records, Tower Records, and... And hot ticks. Chicago second to Detroit in average attendance, better than 11,000 fans per game. And a lot of people thought it would be successful here, but I'm not sure how many predicted that it would be this high this soon, over 11,000 a game. Well, I think because of the NHL lockout, it certainly helped their attendance, but they've certainly reached out to the, a, fan, a new fan base. And I think even with the continued of the NHL season starting up again now, I think that the Wolves are still going to draw very well because they've brought in their own new set of fans, not necessarily Blackhawk fans. Four new cities lead the league in attendance. Those are great numbers in the IHL and Chicago right now, second to Detroit. I agree with you. I think the numbers will, will be up there. Chicago's a great sports town. They've supported two baseball teams. They could easily support two football teams. And I think just to have Hockey back in the front pages and out of the courtrooms is great. Great watching highlights last night in games. In the corner now, dug out. Almost dug out. Here's Breslin fighting for it. Phoenix with Levine. Levine shot. And Young made the save, didn't see it, neither did the referee because that was a quick whistle. That puck was still loose, but he lost sight of it. And he's supposed to blow the whistle when that happens. Well, the puck's going to come out to, to the point. Levine, just make sure he gets it through. There's a man standing right in front of Wendell Young. He makes the save. He loses the control. But the referee doesn't see the puck, so he blows the whistle. I tell you, the Wolves certainly got to start pulling up their socks here. They seem to have fallen asleep a little bit. they got to get back in the groove. Those numbers we just flashed are very unusual because Young's road record is far superior than his home record. He won the first game here, their home opener, and won a game January the 4th against San Diego. He's had some tough luck here at home, more success on the road, but one would think that that will change too and get the confidence going. He's played some big games here, but he's been on the losing end. Here's Snell the other way for Phoenix. All the way down ice. Into the corner it goes. Players battle for it. Dumpy coming in. Chicago will be playing Cleveland tomorrow right here. Phoenix will have to travel to Fort Wayne to face the Comets. Three games in three nights for the Roadrunners. 
Davidson over the line. He bets in. His shot that was blocked by Yax. First question is how did Davidson walk in like that? Then the second question would be how did he miss the shot? Here's Brown. Broken up by Davidson. Davidson a solid but underrated player in the IHL. Nardello. Hold it. Try to play it across. That was a dangerous pass. Three got in the way of Davidson. Along the boards. Kept in. Duffy read that play well, but now must come back. As Phoenix brings it up ice. Taken away by the Wolves, and then it's lost again. Chevalier for Phoenix dumps it back into the Wolves end. 13.48 to go. Second period. Doesn't have the same bite that that first period had. Tipped in front. Wide of goal. Dug out behind the net. Look out for the pass in front. Save off Levine shot who came in from his defensive position. Nice pass by McReynolds. And play is stopped. But Young has been very sharp tonight. He continues here in the second period. Well, Wendell Young makes a great save right here off Levine. He sneaks in by Maltese, and they come around the net, and Levine's all alone in front, but Wendell Young stands his ground, stays up on his feet. Well, McReynolds picks up the puck, and he walks out, and Levine just comes in, and he's got a one-time shot. But I tell you, Wendell Young has played very really smart, very heads up. Davidson at the other end, he comes down, and Chevalier thinks that he's got the puck, but Davidson strips it right back off him. And he misses the short side shelf. There he is, Davidson, shaking his head, thinking, boy, I had a golden opportunity to put us up by two goals, but to no avail. He saw the replay like we did. He'd be saying, why didn't I go far side? Because there was room. But a nice play by Davidson. Here's Levine, shooting it wide of Young. Look what Phoenix does, though. They're setting up players in front. They're screening Wendell Young. They're just not getting the goal. And Young will glove that and tie it up. On that last play, though, I saw two members of the Roadrunners in there causing havoc. And if you're going to take shots from long distance and you can set up that screen, you'll score some goals. Yeah, they're very successful on the offense, and that's the reason why. They jam the net. They get a lot of bodies. They've got a very big hockey club, and uh, they use their size to their advantage in the offensive zone. And I think if they use that to their advantage in their own end, they'd be a lot better off than they are right now. Here's Jim Vesey, he had back-to-back -back 47 goal seasons with Peoria. Played uh, a couple of years ago with Providence, last year with his team. Strauss kept it in, center of the slot. Blocked by Harkins, who clears it out. 13-11 a go. Second period, 2-1 Chicago, and they did a nice job at the beginning of this period in killing off a McDonald penalty. Harkins, the shot save, a nice one. Polly Axe. There's another chance. And that one is deflected wide off the court. <laughs> Tomlinson clears it out. Bessie's pass. Tries to get it back. Kemper. Walking in. Harkins to the breakaway. And a shot. Save Yax. Back to the score. The referee's calling no goal. But I think he's going to have to talk to his uh, linesman there because right there, I think his own player put it in his own net. That went in off Levine. He's calling it. That there's a face off on the outside there. That went off Levine. Let's watch it again. Harkins is going to come in right here on his forehead. He gets slashed big time by Levine. And there it is right here. Levine knocks the puck into his own net. That should be a goal. Bad call by the official. We're going to see it from another angle right here. Harkins is going to go in with a nice save by Yak. But Levine knocks the puck into his own net. It should be a goal. In defense of the referee, and I totally disagree, as does Gina Briaco, and the lip readers of Chicago just got a treat. Look at his position. If we get a chance to see the replay again, watch his angle. There's no way he can see how that puck goes in. Watch where, I don't think we'll see it on this angle. But the referee's position, he cannot see the puck. Yax makes the big kick save, and here comes Levine. He's sliding along, and he knocks it right into his own net right there. Okay, there's the referee on this side. So he doesn't see what happens. He, I think he thinks that the puck's underneath yes. the goaltender. He lost sight of the puck. That's why he did it. It is a bad call. I'm just explaining why I think he did that. He's totally screened on that side. But I think there you've got to say to your linesman, hey, what happened? I missed it. Yeah, the, the thing that I don't think is uh, very appropriate is he didn't consult his linesmen at all to see if they maybe saw yeah. what happened there because I'm sure the Phoenix players certainly thought it would have been a goal against yeah. him. It is a bad call, no question. But you can see on that replay, he does not see the puck. And that's why he blows the whistle. Still a bad call. Played back here, Phoenix with a chance off the pipe. 
Could have been a goal, and that would have been disaster because Chicago should have had one at the other end. It was taken away. Well, Chapman right there certainly had the golden opportunity. Perot out at the point, blocked out by Chicago. 12-16 to go. Second period. Chicago 2, Phoenix 1, but it should be 3-1. Well, here's where the Wolves certainly have to keep their composure, get their focus back into what they're doing. It's a no goal, so there's nothing they can do about it now. they got to get back to what they were doing, create some chances offensively, and get back that goal that they didn't get, that they wasn't counted on their behalf. Oh, Perot is tangling up Wiseman. Wiseman giving it right back. Here's Malte, and now a penalty. Wiseman's going to go. Maybe both, let's see. We'll sort it out for you when we come back. But right now, they're looking just Weissman's way. Two on Chicago. Come back with us. It's Wolves Hockey on Sports Channel. She'll try to drown you. She'll try to freeze you. She'll try to burn you. She'll try to blow you away. But she will not succeed. The Nissan Pathfinder. Chicago. While it's been called the second city, Chicagoans know it's second to none. It's a place where quality is more important than quantity, and bigger isn't always better. At Canfield, we've known this since 1924. So when you're thirsty for refreshment, head for the taste that captures the flavor of our great city. Canfield's the flavor of Chicago. 8-14, the time of the slashing penalty on Brian Wiseman. You know, Wiseman had, uh, I thought, interfered with Perot earlier, and I thought maybe the referee, perhaps realizing that he had made the mistake at the other end, was letting it go. Then Perot gave him one back, but then something else happened in the deep slot, and he called Wiseman. Well, they had quite a battle going there in the corner and giving each other shots, and I certainly expected that both players would have gotten the penalty. Here's Snell, an important power play for Phoenix, and likewise an important penalty kill for Chicago. They've killed off their last eight power plays against them. Perot out of the point. Snell. Yannick Perot holding. 15 power play goals. He leads the IHL. Snell a shot. Hip wide of goal. Behind the net. Brown looking to center. Blocked by Rivers. Perot picks it up. Out to Snell. Snell bothered there by Lee Davidson. Rivers took a swipe. Young also there. Dug out. Phoenix out of the point. Set a point. Fake. Had Breslin going down. Straub. A puck almost cleared the line. Back to Straub. Top of the circle. Just wide of Young. The angle was there. Well, that was a very close shot right there by Straub. But Wendell Young obviously had his angle played perfectly, and he shoots it wide, and it goes all the way down so that the Wolves can get some new penalty killers out there. Snell will come back to the right side on that pass. Right back for Snell. He's got some good wheels. Snell checking into Kemper. Buck cleared. Not out, out of the zone. Brown in front. Tip save. Young. And now the net was dislodged. Roberts pushing Chevalier into the net. This is an important penalty kill we were mentioning for Chicago because they've got to do what you said. Get their composure back. Yes, it was a goal. Yes, it was taken away. The game goes on. It's a little dump pass towards the net. They got a man in front. He makes the nice deflection, but Wendell Young kicks it out. And then Gordy Roberts forces him. See the puck's going to come up the boards. A nice little tip in front right there. But Wendell Young's got some great focus tonight. He stays with the puck all the way. It kicks to the side. And then the net gets dislodged. And Chevalier has played a strong game so far for Phoenix. And I tell you, it is a very big kill right here, JP. they got to get back on track. Kill it off and go back from there. Berglund, Malte, Kemper, and Gordy Roberts to try and kill it for now for the Wolves. 45 seconds left. Wolves are down a man. They're up 2-1 to one here in the second. Foot pass. Berglund chasing it down. Got a piece of it. Nice job by Tim Berglund. Killing more clock here. Malte. Effective board checking. Good job by the Wolves. They eat up about 12, 15 seconds here. And more now because Phoenix can't come out of their zone. Perot tied up by Davidson, who just came on for Berglund. Malte stays out there with Davidson's help. Clears it. 
Well, that's some great work right there by the penalty killers. Anytime the team's got their back to the wall where they've got to go back and get the puck, if you've got the opportunity to get some pressure on them, which they did there, that's what you want. Just wide of Young's outstretched glove hand. Power play is over. Two penalty kills for Chicago. They've killed their last nine. Phoenix down with Perot. Take it away, Breslin. Tripped up. Or Harkins make it. Penalty's coming up. All I could see was the number six, and it looked like a lefty, but it's actually the righty Harkins who draws the penalty. Well, right there, if Harkins has about another half step on Perot, I think he would have seen a penalty shot here. Harkins just strips him the puck, and he's trying to break away, but Perot just reaches down and pulls his feet out from under him. And I think it was a good call by the referee right there because Harkins was not in the clear and didn't deserve a penalty shot right there. Good call by the official. So Yannick Perot will sit this one out for tripping at 10-27 now. Good goaltending wins your games, and special teams do as well. The Wolves have killed off two power plays against them and they have scored when they have the chance with a two-man advantage they need another one here absolutely it's it's a crucial power play here they worked it around very well when they had it the last time when they got the goal and then certainly if they can do it again i think they've got to keep the man in front of the net and get some action in front of the goaltender for the screen and get the shots through wiseman wanted back for crowley now at the left point Nardella helped to keep it alive. Secord is there behind the net. Al Secord tied up. Flipped all the way out of the left point. Nardella, quick transition to the right side edge of the circle of Crowley. Behind the net, Secord lets it go for Todd Harkins. Harkins holding out of the left point. Pass back to Harkins in front for Secord. Never made it. Levine blocked it. Wiseman blocks it at this end. Wiseman out muscled on the left side by Bilesma. Watch out for Bilesma. He has scored two shorthanded goals this year to lead this Phoenix team. Back the other way, Chicago with Nardella being forced back. Higher play for another 121 for the Wolves, ranked eighth in the IHL. Crowley. Jumping it in behind the net. Yanis, who's played steady, so has Wendell Young at the other end. This one's cleared off a high stick. Well, right there, Ted Crowley with a poor dumping attempt. And it's crucial on the power play if you're going to get some pressure on him. You've got to certainly make that good dump in to get the puck back. Tomlinson is really fired up on this penalty kill. All the way back. Back pedaling. Mutualizing now into his own zone. And Straub. Two players going after him for Chicago. And dumped the other way. 44 seconds left in the man advantage for the Wolves. 8.15 to go in the second period. Chicago up 2-1. to one. Here in the second, here is Ted Crowley. Straight up the middle, he's got eight goals on the year. Crowley with the brakes on. To Rivers, a high, hard shot. His glove, and it was a dangerous shot when Rivers got that pass. Had it been blocked, it was clear sailing at the other end. It was a very dangerous play right there. Vashon read it very well. Crowley still decides he's going to make that little pass across to Sean Rivers, and it's actually very lucky that uh, right here Crowley's going to come across the blue line and take a look. He sees River coming in for the one-timer, and there's Vashon. He almost blocks the puck, and if he does there, he's got a clear breakaway, and there's not going to be anyone that's going to come close to catch him. Crowley trying to feed that across. Didn't have as much zip as he would have liked. Out at the left point. Kept alive. Roberts gets it back center point, lost it in the skates, but backhanded it in front. The backhander saved, rebound loose. No one there for the Wolves, and it's cleared out. They were close. Well, there's Malte right on the doorstep. The puck just follows him everywhere here tonight. And right there, he has a golden opportunity to get the natural hat trick. A little hat trick right there on the rebound. Yax clears it around the boards. Time running out of the power play. Three seconds left. Firing at his rivers, and it's just wide. Malte trying to deflect it in front. Shot went wide. Picked up in the corner, Davidson behind that, Courtney wraparound block, it's loose, and on the short side somehow Yax has got it covered, and Rivers against the much bigger foe right there, he had to look up to give a shot. Well that was Levine in there, and he's a big man, six foot three, 220 pounds, and I tell you, it's, uh, Sean Rivers is certainly uh, doing a job sticking his nose in there. Time for a local break, it's two to one, Chicago Wolves leading. Phoenix, 7.20 to play in the second. We're coming right back. This is it, the final hole of the Ameritech Senior Open for Sox announcer Ken the Hawk Harrelson. It's a 540-yard par 5. 
But Harrelson, showing amazing ability, uses a three wood and seven iron to reach the green, setting up this 40 foot putt for Eagle. Are you with me? The Wolves supply some pressure and almost score a goal. The puck goes behind the net. Courtney tries the wrap around. He gets another crack at it, and then it comes right to Davidson right there. But he can't get enough wood on it to lift it over top of Yaks, who sprawled out covering the net. Next faceoff between Harkins and McReynolds. McReynolds, we told you, has spent time with three NHL teams: Harkins, two, Calgary, and Hartford. Quick shot, Gillingham, saved by Yaks. This play by Gillingham, he pulled the trigger in a hurry. Off Duffy and out of the zone. Phoenix will take it back. 2-1, Chicago leading it. Both goals by Multe. Perot has the lone Phoenix tally. And both goaltenders have been sharp throughout this game. Off the glass, Gillingham flips it back in. Todd Gillingham sends it right behind the net. Yaks leaves it off. Chapman was missed. He was all lined up by Breslin. Along the left wing boards, Tomlinson, Gillingham right with him. Gillingham tied with Jason Marshall for the lead in minor penalties in the IHL. And the whistle stops play, and that'll give us a chance to tell you that this Chicago Wolves telecast may not be reproduced or retransmitted without the express written consent of the Chicago Wolves and the International Hockey League. No unauthorized use is permitted. Wolves are back home tomorrow night here on Sports Channel. When Chicago will take on the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Same day coverage begins at 11 p.m. on your home for Wolves hockey all season long. Sports Channel Chicago. There's the number on the bottom of your screen for ticket information. Good seats are still available for that game against Cleveland. And the Lumberjacks come in. Third game in as many nights. And Chicago thinking about revenge the last time in here. Cleveland with DeRuville in goal. Stopped Chicago. 3-2 in a game that the Wolves felt that they should have won. Well, the Lumberjacks are creeping right up on the tail of the Wolves here. I'll tell you, it's going to be a huge game coming into here tomorrow night for uh, the battle for the positioning in the standings in their division. Cleveland just played last night in Kansas City. Play in Houston uh, tomorrow, or tonight, and then here tomorrow. Cleveland won their game last night. There's only a two-point difference right now coming into tonight's game. Puck shot all the way in. Phoenix with Brown, he can't get it. Davidson with a flip, back at the center line, Snell, and then a whistle on the hand pass. 6.18 to go in the second period, there is Al Secord, 36 years of age, and he came back after that knee problem, and one of the reasons, if you listen to all those that know, is because he has always kept himself in remarkable shape, even when he was the star of the NHL, even when he left the game, he was in good shape. Well, Al Secord is a tribute to a professional athlete right there. He works so hard. He probably he works harder than anybody on this hockey club at staying in shape. And I think that that kind of work breeds with the younger guys where they look at him and say, geez, you know, he's 36 years old and doing this. I better get my tail in gear and do the same thing. He leads by example. Puck comes all the way back. Kevin McDonald with a chase. McDonald off the boards. All the way back. Snell almost lost it. Picked off. Davidson fired it back in. Nardella was still trapped, though, in the zone. Well, Tommy Nardella right there, too. You know, we talked earlier tonight about him playing, starting out on defense, and now he's up front. And I tell you, it looks good because he's removed to the point on the power play, and now back up front, he's shown his versatility. A reminder that the Chicago Wolves offer special discount rates to groups of 15 people or more to all Wolves home games this season. For more information, call 1-800-THE-WOLVES and ask for group sales. Gina Briaco told me the other day that a family came out to a game of 18. That was a group, and he said that was their family outing. So uh, 
It can be any kind of a group. Just bring your family if you've got that many. Well, that's a fantastic opportunity for a big group outing and see a great entertaining hockey game and have some fun with the kids. I'm sure there are a lot of groups here tonight as Yaks clears it around the boards. Phoenix comes back. Look at this transition game. Three on two, now four on three. Over the line they come. Drop there for Edgerton. Big shot for the circle wide of Wendell Young. 5.23 left in the period. Period number two. Here's Chicago with a 2-1 lead. Rivers is trying to bust free. We're making multi on that left side. Roberts on the left side. Roberts pinning his man. Last couple of years, Gordy Roberts has spent with the Boston Bruins in the sure NHL. Now he's a player assistant coach here with Chicago. Well, Gordy Roberts in the 20 years, a couple of years back, uh, I think the Philadelphia Flyers thought he was all washed up and uh, decided to let him go in Pittsburgh Penguins, pick him up, and uh, he led their team in plus minus, won two Stanley Cups, and uh, ended up with two more years on top of that with the Boston Bruins. So you got to really give the guy a lot of credit, boy, for the longevity that he's had along his career. You must have played several games against him. Right. Yeah, Gordy and I played, uh, you know, he played with Minnesota and St. Louis, so in the same division that I was for probably my first 10 years, so saw him quite a few times. Icing indicated, it'll bring the next face off back the other way. There's Jack Duffy, he is at the other end of the spectrum for the Chicago Wolves, one of the younger, lesser experienced players trying to get more playing time and improve with that, and he's done that. Yeah, Jack Duffy certainly has impressed me the way he's come along this season. Spent a little bit of time last year in uh, Las Vegas, and then he spent the rest of the season in the East Coast Hockey League, and he stepped in here, and they sort of gradually put him into the play, let him little bit by little bit, and he's uh, responded by improving tremendously and uh, showing that he can be a regular here. Harkins off the draw, one the other way. Snell will take it. Chris Snell will give it up on the right side. Here comes Phoenix McReynolds, shifting out of the left wing side across the blue line of Chicago. McReynolds settles the loose puck. Try to give it up, Duffy with a block, it's still loose. And then dug out by Chicago, they move it up ice. Breslin's pass to Gillingham. Todd Gillingham tied up, picked up on the right side, and then cleared by Jim Bessie. Young will leave it off for Duffy. Well, can't help but think of that goal that was taken away from Chicago. A 3-1 lead would be a lot better looking at this point. Over the line come the Wolves. Behind the net it goes. Phoenix looking to dig it out. Roadrunners with McReynolds. Slides it across. Phoenix, the number one farm team for the Los Angeles Kings. Gretzky had a goal last night in that 3-3 tie with Toronto. Big year for the Kings after last year's disaster. Stanley Cup finalists and then out of the playoffs in one year. Off that touch, the icing comes back. When we come back to Chicago, 3.57 to go in the second. Chicago up by a goal. Buy a burger at some places, and who knows, it may have been reheated in a microwave or spent time drying out under a heat lamp, which in fact makes it great. Oh, for skeet shooting, why not get an award-winning 99-cent quarter-pound Champ Burger from Checkers? It's bigger than a Big Mac, thicker than a Whopper, and it's always made to order when you order. The Champ Burger, 99 cents every day, always delicious, never reheated. <laughs> Checkers, one taste and you're ours. to more cities in Mexico than any other U.S. airline. It's more airline for your money. Well, if you're a Wolves fan, as these young fans are, you may want to make special note to Wolves Call every Monday night from 6 to 7 p.m. on WCBR 92.7 on your FM dial. It's the flagship station for Wolves Hockey. Join Judd Surratt, Sean Hegan, and Adam Fox every Monday for Wolves Call. Face off to Wendell Young's right side. Less than four minutes to play in the second period. 3.57 to be precise. Two on Chicago. At the point, it's blocked in front. Sean Rivers with a block. Wolves trying to clear it out. Taken. Chevalier tied up by McDonald. Chevalier got free. Couldn't center it. Got some help from Bashan. Kicked away by the Wolves. Bashan's got it. 
Looking to center it out in front. It's deflected wide of Brown. Taken by Bergman. McDonald was just tripped up in front. It's dumped back the other way. Wide of Yaks. Picked up by Levine. Levine checked by Secord. Courtney came in. Didn't get his man. And now it's picked up by Phoenix. Hope checked into the zone deep. McDonald trying to turn around. Got some help from Young. Behind the net. Watch out for Vashon. He centers it in front. Never got there. Tied up in the netting. It'll be a faceoff coming up to Wendell Young's right. We'll have our short intermission coming up in between periods two and three since we're on tape delay tonight, so we hope you'll stick around for that. Our condensed intermission, or intermission light as we like to call it. Bob McGill, a different period here in the second than in the first. We were speculating. Could they keep up that pace? I didn't think so, and they did not. Well, the pace certainly has slowed down quite a bit this period compared to the first period. The Wolves were very hungry in the first period. A long layoff. They came out jumping, smoking, and uh, Phoenix came out, and they, you know, tried to get going early, but I think the, the effects of their all-night flight and short day certainly has uh, looked like it's maybe catching up with them a bit, and the Wolves maybe are just a little bit tired from that long layoff period. That pass, Perot drills it, and Wendell Young got that one off the shoulder. That's a big save. We're three minutes from the end of the period, and Perot almost ties it up. On a giveaway. Well, Wendell Young right there continues to be sharp. Maltese misses his pass as Perot picks it up at the blue line, walks in, and just cranks it. Wendell Young gets it high in the chest, but he corrals the rebound right there at the high shot, and he just under the mask corrals the puck and covers it up for the whistle. Yeah, like Perot's instincts. Great save by Young, but Perot could have brought it in a little deeper, but he knew he could score from there, drill that puck, put it on net, and that's what he did, but Young beat him. Perot this time beaten by the blocker of Wendell Young. No speed on that shot. 2.50 to go in the period. Chicago up 2-1. to one. Hawk is dumped back the other way. They're indicating icing. That won't have the legs. Berglund's got the legs. Knocking it down. Keeping play in the attack zone. Berglund with some help. From Wiseman. Multe. Multe around the boards. Left point kept in. Roberts right side. Kemper settles the rolling puck and it's blocked. And it goes into the first row of seats out of play, a souvenir for someone, as it's time for us to talk about progress. A progress report coming up for you here on Sports Channel. And here's Chicago's progress report. An update, the report card. It's still a surprise to me that the road record is better than the home record, but I think that could change. But look at the last page, or the last part. 10-1-0 when leading after two periods. It's quite the opposite when they're trailing. They're 1-14-3. They have not shown that ability to come from behind. So it's very important that they come out of this period with a lead. Well, it is, JP. And if you look at the stats around any league in hockey, doesn't matter professional or junior or college, I bet you you'll find that 85% of teams that, that are down don't have a great record at all when it comes to coming back when they're down. Phoenix, despite their offense, is in the same boat that you mentioned. Loose puck. Phoenix is 2-15 and 4 when they're down. 19-3 and 3 went up after two. Big contrast. Here's Levine. The referee wants the puck to move. That's Rob Hearn, the referee. It's loose. Look out in front. Shot to score. Killing him. Some great effort right here. Working in the corner. And Gillingham just makes a couple little chips with one hand on his stick. And Davidson, or Greslin, puts it back out front right to Todd Gillingham. And he makes no mistake by putting it under Yaks. Right there, he sticks with it. And I'll tell you, that's dogged determination right there on the part of Gillingham and Greslin. And it's a huge goal with two minutes to go in the period. Sometimes players look frustrated when the whistle doesn't blow, but they want the puck to move, and that's a great example. That puck was still moving. It gave the Wolves a chance, and Gillingham with a long reach and help from Breslin makes it pay off. Gillingham's eighth goal of the year. Great pass. Harkins, one-on-one, -on -one, and now gets some help. Try to leave it off. It was intended for Crowley. Gillingham almost got it. Gillingham ran into the boards, and he's not getting up. I can't see who the Phoenix player is, but I'm watching Gillingham at the other end. Bessie's, Bessie, the whistle went, and he continued and tried to score on Wendell Young after the whistle, so Duffy took exception, protecting his goaltender, which he should. A couple of big men right here trying to get at each other. My eyes 
one giving him all the way who is still down. So I never saw this. The Chicago fans looping it, looping it up here. They hate when this happens. I don't know what part of killing him hit the boards. I thought it was his shoulder, but you know, it could have been the shoulder, could have been the knee, but he's okay. He's back up as Duffy goes off and so will Bessie. But I watched him and he hit those boards harder and he didn't move. Well, Todd Gillingham went down and he, he uh, was coming down the ice full speed and the puck went the other way and he tried to make a quick turn and he lost his footing and I think he went in face first. He's got some blood on his nose. He made a pretty, it was a pretty heavy collision with the boards. And I tell you, every anytime something like that happens, <laughs> you know, the players are going to sure tease him about that one. They're going to say that uh, there was a phantom up in the, up in the crowd with the dart gun that got him on that one. Well, let's, let's look at something better from Todd Gillingham. The goal that he just scored was his eighth of the year for Breslin. They're just announcing that in the background. That'll make him forget about that nose problem. Well, Gillingham, for you kids who are told two hands on your stick all the time, sometimes it pays to have only one hand as he pokes it one-handed twice. And look at the celebration right here by Gillingham. He's a happy customer. And I'll tell you, you like to see guys like that because that's what hockey's all about. It's a business a lot of times, and it's a man's sport, but yet it's a, one of those games where you see men acting like kids, and it's so great to see. And right here, Gillingham is going to turn, and he actually gets clipped right there with the stick. He's got his hands up, and then he falls down and goes sliding into the boards. But I don't think the referee is going to listen to his argument too much right there. Todd Gillingham. Eight goals, and that was a big one for him. Near the end of the period. Chicago should have had a two-goal lead before, now they're getting it. You know, out of his eight goals, I think we've seen four of them, JP, so maybe we should do more games and uh, he can become a heavy threat in the goal department. Sure. Five each for fighting on Duffy and Bessie, plus two for roughing, two for slashing. One, the two on uh, Duffy is for roughing. Bessie had two for slashing. Here's Chicago with Davidson. Seacourt battling for it. It's still loose. Davidson joining it. Davidson digs it out. Davidson tries to center it, being tied up. At Seacourt. Back for Davidson. Jumping after Nardella. One minute to play in the period. Played up ice. Phoenix will take it over the line. Snell at the circle. Locked. Flipped out by Chicago. One thing with Chicago losing Duffy for a little bit, there's a delayed penalty coming up here. It's against Chicago. Yaks goes to the bench. That's well, have McDonald's going to get a roughing penalty right here. He gave a little extra shot to one of the Roadrunner players and uh, took it. McDonald took a little exception. The guy uh, gave him a little push, and Kevin McDonald lost his cool a little bit for a second, gave him a shot in the head, and he's going to sit off for two minutes. A little bit of an unnecessary penalty, especially at the end of a period right here. The point I was going to make before is if you lose Duffy for a while, if there's a problem, if you're short on defense, you can always move Nardella back. So that's one thing that helps out. You can have four lines by using Nardella up top, but he could also come back and play some defense. I'm sure Gene Ubraco certainly has that in mind in case he runs into something like that in, a, in the hockey game anytime. If you've got that extra defenseman dress, uh, I can remember a few years back when I played with the Blackhawks, uh, we had eight or nine defensemen, and Mike Keenan dressed me, and I played forward for about 20 games. And a couple times guys got hurt, and I, he put me back on defense. And, and I think coaches think of that sometimes. And uh, if you're a defenseman, you just want to stay in the lineup any way you can. And I was certainly more than happy to play forward if it meant staying in the lineup. Should I ask you how many goals you scored? Or uh, should I? I got one when I was up there. Okay. I'd ask you to describe it, but we have to stick to this game here. There's still 32 seconds left in this period. So Chicago's only concerned about killing off this portion. They'll worry about the rest in the next period if they can do it here. It's a 3-1 Chicago lead. The Gillingham goal. Phoenix trying to dig it out. All the way around the boards. Roadrunners trying to play to the right point. It's blocked. McDonald's sitting off two for that minor penalty. So Chicago's down a man, down to seven seconds. Strong for Phoenix. Across the line, and the shot went wide by Chevalier as the horn sounds, ending a much different second period than the first period, but the crowd likes the way it ended. 
And on that goal by that man, Todd Gillingham, Chicago will take a two-goal lead into the dressing room after two periods of play. When we come back to the third period a bit later on, Chicago will have a minute 17 to kill while they're down a man. After two, Wolves three, Phoenix one. You're watching Chicago Wolves hockey right here on Sports Trip. We can just do this to air pollution. In a way, we can. If homes and industries, power plants and vehicles would just switch to natural gas. Clean, economical, natural gas. Think what we'll save. Here comes Eves as he crosses the blue line. Works straight into the goal. Deep shoots. Scores! Oh, that's a big hit. Kids in attendance here tonight. Tons of them. So just what is the quickest way to cover 100 meters? Well, if you ask Tony Muse, 10-year member of the U.S. World Speed Skating Team and holder of four national speed records, it's a pair of boots with 10 wheels underfoot. But if you ask nine-time U.S. national bike champion Stephen Haig, he'll say, just give me two wheels and a handful of gears. I was really surprised how quick he got off the line. Man, I was nervous as all get up. Uh, he had he had five or six bike lanes on me. Bulls, Hawks, Sox, Sports Channel, but fans won. Tonight's Wolves game is also brought to you in part by Northern Illinois Gas, proud sponsor of the Chicago Wolves Zamboni, fueled by clean burning natural gas. You're going to see a very happy guy here, Todd Gillingham. There's a reason for this big celebration, and the reason being Todd Gillingham scored his eighth goal of the year, and that has given the Chicago Wolves a 3-1 to one lead after two periods of play. That's where we stand now, and when we come back to bring you the third period, Chicago will have some penalty killing to do if they're going to hold on and win this game. A decent second period, not as good as the first period. Welcome back, everyone, to the Rosemont Horizon. Along with Bob McGill, I'm John Paul Della Camera. We saw a lot this period, including a goal that Bob McGill and I saw go in, but the referee didn't, and he said no goal. Well, the referee gets caught a little bit out of position here on this play. Uh, it's a great pass by Mick Kemper, and little relay, and Harkins is going to go in all alone. He's going to get slashed from behind, but he still gets his shot off. Now the defenseman, Levin, is going to slide in, and he's going to put the puck right into his own net, as you can clearly see right there. But what happens is the... What happens is the linesman, or the referee's on the wrong side. But on the other goal, they come back to make it 3-1 anyway. Gillingham, good second effort twice. He gets the puck and he stuffs it under the act for the big 3-1 lead. And there's a big kid having a great celebration right there. Well, that was a big goal for Chicago because a one-goal lead could have been a scary one. And at this point, it's a two-goal lead, but they still remember, have to take care of that man advantage that Phoenix will have for a good part of the start of the period. In terms of the second period statistics, shots on goal are just about even. In the power play department, Phoenix so far has been stopped by Chicago. That's been a plus. We're looking at face-offs once Chicago has still maintained that. But one of the things that Chicago has done much better in that period, Bob McGill, they cut down on the giveaways. They went from seven to four. Maybe a four is still a lot, but it's progress. Well, any time that you can make progress where you're limiting your mistakes, and hockey is, make no mistake about it, Hockey is a game of like mistakes, that. and uh, they certainly cut them down. They had seven giveaways in the first period, only four of that period. So it cuts their chances down against them, which is going to help them win a hockey game. And with a two-goal lead going into 
third period, chances are looking pretty good. 20 more minutes of hockey to come your way here at the Rosemont Horizon. Come back with us, see if the Wolves can hang on, or else it'll be that dreaded shootout. It's 3-1, Chicago. Chicago. While it's been called the second city, Chicagoans know it's second to none. It's a place where quality is more important than quantity, and bigger isn't always better. At Canfield, we've known this since 1924. So when you're thirsty for a refreshment, head for the taste that captures the flavor of our great city. Canfield's the flavor of Chicago. She'll try to drown you. She'll try to freeze you. She'll try to burn you. She'll try to blow you away. But she will not succeed. The Nissan Pathfinder. Northern Illinois University Husky basketball is coming your way. The Huskies and the new MCC bring more exciting basketball against teams like LaSalle, Xavier, Butler, Loyola, UIC, and more. Catch two great NIU home games when the Huskies take on Loyola Saturday, January 14th, and Xavier January 28th. Don't miss the exciting halftime shows by the Jesse White Tumblers and the amazing Ashton family. NIU is in the MCC. Don't miss it. On the court, he was good for seven or eight dishes a night. But on January 23rd, one should be enough. See NBA legend and Chicago favorite Norm Van Leer and five other athletes honored at the 8th Annual Sports Channel Sports Awards Dinner to benefit the March of Dimes Birth Defects Foundation. It's at the Stouffer Renaissance Hotel downtown and televised on Sports Channel. For tickets, call 312-435-4007. Be a hero for kids. Bulls, Hawks, Suns, Sports Channel, what fans want. Welcome back, everyone, to Wolves Hockey. You can be any age to enjoy the Chicago Wolves. 3-1 is your score here. Another great crowd watching the Wolves lead over Phoenix. Gino Briaco has given his team the last message, and he must have done a good job with the penalty killers because they have killed their last nine in the last three games. That's a very important stat, JP. I think if this team is going to be successful, special teams are going to come into play. Their penalty killing has been ranked, I think, uh, dead last in the IHL. And you're not going to go anywhere if you can't kill penalties, especially in the playoffs. So now in this last half of the season, I think you're going to see them working more on it in practice to try and fine tune it and climb up the ladder to a more respectable uh, height, as you might want to say, I guess. It's uh, only 74%, per, and uh, if you're going to go anywhere, you got to be up in the middle 80s uh, if you're going to be a great at uh, killing off penalties. The Jackson goal, you're looking at Bessie. Remember, he had the five minutes plus two, so did Duffy, so those guys won't be out for a while, but it's McDonald's penalty that bothers the Wolves right now. They've got a minute 17 to try and kill it. And they'll send out Multe and Berglund. It's been a total team effort for the Wolves penalty killing that we've seen tonight. The forwards have been interchanged so much and so well. It's not any two guys that have been doing it. It's several. Well, it's certainly a team uh, aspect where it reflects on everybody. And they've certainly done a great job so far tonight by using everybody and utilizing uh, the kill. Referee Hearn has got something. I was going to say that was not offside. He's got two players going off. They got Berglund and Brown giving it to each other with their sticks up and down the ice there. And the referee finally had enough and decided to sit them both down for a couple of minutes. Well, there's an early message. Berglund and Hark at each sitting. There's Rob Laird, the head coach of the Phoenix Roadrunners. Coach Moncton last year to the Calder Cup final against Portland. Ran into a very good Portland team and Rob Laird's team finished in second place. He has some of the players from that Moncton team with him in Phoenix, and I guarantee he notices the climate change from Moncton to Brunswick to Phoenix. He knows he's ha. gone to heaven. There's an understatement. Live the good life. Here's Straub keeping it in. Stays five on four. Tomlinson across, and that didn't make it. Somehow. Davidson with a poke check. Tomlinson kept it in just wide of goal. Poke checked out of the zone. Here comes Moncton, short-handed. Malte fires and look out. Yax was ducking as Malte was thinking hat trick. 
Didn't miss by much. It just went over the crossbar. Remember that stat we gave you. 12 shorthanded goals have been given up by Phoenix. That could have been number 13. Along the boards, Yannick Perot. Out at the right point. Kept in by Snell. Back for Perot. 25 seconds left in the power play. Perot with a flip pass. Snell 50 feet away. Now the pass to the left side. Straub poked that by Young. It goes behind the cage. Dug out by Straub. He got there in a hurry. Centers it. Deep slot. Snell. Right circle to Perot. Back out, center point Snell. Back to Perot, and it's blown by Wendell Young. And I'm noticing here, Bob McGill, defensively, the players for the Wolves are reacting so well that Phoenix doesn't have a good shot. And they're keeping them out, they're holding a tight defensive box. And when you're killing a penalty with your four men, you try to maintain a box and, all, and keep, keep everybody out on the outside. And you see they've got a great job there in a perfectly good square. They're keeping the puck to the outside, and if a player scores from way out there as the shot that Pro had there, then that's the goaltender's fault. And if you continue to keep everyone around the outside, you're going to do a great job of killing off the penalty. That was good discipline. They were not running around. Six seconds to go on the power play for Phoenix. Chicago leads 3-1. to one. Hope you're enjoying this one tonight here on Sports Channel. Off the draw. Picked up. Now it goes to Snell. Poked away. Wiseman. Can he reach it with the long stick? No, but the penalty's over. Coming out is McDonald. Flip pass. Harkins running off wing over the line. Busting in. Trying to drop it off. McDonald keeps it on its way. And now McDonald will go to the bench for a change. Ted Crowley comes on. Buck taking over now. On the flip pass. And that's blocked. On the boards. Here's Crowley. Right side, killing it with his eighth goal. That gave this team the two-goal margin that they have now. Chicago on top by two. 18.05 to play in this third period. In front of another great crowd here in Rosemont. Cleared up now by Phoenix. All the way back at the other end. Rivers looking for present. Long shot, Levine tipped wide. That was a good chance by Chevalier. He was open. On the boards. Centered in front and Young's got it somewhere. Wendell Young kept that puck in front of him. I don't think he had it initially, but he kept it to where he could get to it. Well, that's a great, great quickness and reaction right there by Wendell Young. A little bit of a sloppy play here by the Wolves in their own end again. The puck's going to come around behind the net. And the player from the sideboards jumps and beats his man back to the front of the net. Tomlinson gets a great opportunity right there to stuff it in. But Wendell Young holds the fort down again. There it is right there. He corrals it off his skate. And actually, Wendell Young played a little pinball with the puck between his two pads. But he hangs on and keeps it out of the net. He's played an outstanding game so far tonight. Certainly has uh, held their team in when he's had to. Some great saves tonight for Wendell Young. Looking for one of those uh, infrequent home wins. Hoping that one can lead to another. All Chicago really needs is a nice home streak and people will forget about the fact that they're a game below 500 at home. And they can start it this weekend, tonight, tomorrow against Cleveland. And they could be on their way. Yeah, I think it would certainly be a great way to start off their second half to continue and, and build something on home ground because they certainly go out on the road and feel comfortable and show that they can win hockey games. So if they can win at home, they're going to climb in the standings. Wolves are 5-4-1 overall in their last 10 games. Down the right side, Nardella. Secourt. Secourt's check. Bounced off of it. Get some help from Lee Davidson. 3-1. The lead belongs to Chicago. Over the line, Phoenix. Young is there. Wendell Young fires it around the other way. Picked up by Bob Nardella. Chris pass to Davidson. Davidson over the line. Secord was busting, but Davidson couldn't see him. He was tied up. Davidson now in front. He wanted Secord to his help. And Yaks will cover it up. And now Davidson has a high stick with Levine, I believe. And then we got Kevin McDonald coming in there. And that's what he should do right there. I don't think that Levine, uh, he's a great big man, picking on Davidson right there and being the team player that Kevin McDonald in, is, he comes in. Like Levine is six foot three, 200 pounds. And I'll tell you, Davidson right here, he's gonna 
he gets a shot in the back of the head and Levine just keeps going after him. Well, Davidson's got a stick wrapped around Levine's head a little bit there, trying to get a stick up to protect himself, but, you know, Kevin McDonald comes in there, and I, and I tell you, I, I had to do that a lot in my career, but you do what's best for your team and your teammates, and you stick up for them. And I think right there, Kevin McDonald certainly shows why he's a great, not only popular with his teammates, but with all the fans, because he can come and help out with his, any of his players. I, I asked uh, our people to get a shot of this guy. Look at that neon man. He's one of 15,569. He's the only one out of 15,569 that is electronically lit up like that. I wonder what it costs, and more importantly, I wonder how he even thought of it. I wonder how many batteries that thing takes. I don't know. I've been seeing this flash the whole game and wondered what it was. Some words from Gina Briaco to Sean Rivers. Ted, the Wolves have to be careful. They'll remember Duffy had to sit for a while. Now McDonald's back in the box. So some other defensemen are going to have to shoulder some extra minutes. Crowley talking things over with Berglund. As we get ready for a face-off, it's 3-1, Chicago leading at 16.51 to go here. I'm sure Gene Ubriaco is telling his team here that they go going to get the puck in the other team's zone and work hard, and if you continue to work hard, now Phoenix is going to have to take more chances on the offense to try and create some opportunities for them to get back in the hockey game. And when that happens, if the Wolves play good defensively, they're going to get a couple of more odd man breaks, some opportunities to increase their lead. Phoenix last night in Vegas led 3-2 after 2, 4-2 in the third, and then gave up five unanswered goals in 13 minutes and three seconds to lose the game. They ended up on the short end of a 7-4 score. Our play tonight, Phoenix is 0 for 3, and apparently they'll have one here. Well, I think that the that the Roadrunners are certainly going to have a little bit of a transition time to get used to losing their top scorer, Rob Brown, who is uh, first or second in the league with parole, and also Rob Cowley, who is the fifth on the team in scoring. And when you lose your two, two of your top five players, there's a little bit of an adjustment period, and they've got to find the niche. That's a dubious distinction to be number one in goals scored, but also in goals allowed. McDonald has two for roughing, that's the difference because Levine and Davidson each had two for high, sticking at 3.09. So let's see what happens here, but Chicago has done well, killing off penalties, their last nine, as the graphic had showed you at the top. Should be 10 now, I guess. Came in at seven for seven. Picked up now by Phoenix. Roadrunners bring it out, busting out with Straub at the center line, dumped in wide of Wendell Young, who sticks it to the corner. Kevin Brown, number 94. You guys want those high and strange numbers now in hockey. 44 is Perot. Brown, flip pass, nice idea. Didn't get the right hop. Nice couple of swipes at it from Berglund, but he couldn't quite clear the zone. Here is Perot. Back out of the right point, Snell fires it, sticked away by Wendell Young. Molte couldn't get at that rebound. There's Perot again, with a minute 17 on the power play. Side of the net, pass back, right through the crease. Berglund chasing. Phoenix will get a hold of it, that's Perot, all over the ice now. Yannick Perot, blocked, Crowley couldn't clear it, off that glass. Berglund there. Crowley was coming in, gambling, and Crowley got it. Well, some good persistence right there. Didn't give them time, even though the puck was scrambling around on the boards. Ted Crowley comes up and supports his teammate Berglund right there, and they managed to get it out and down the ice and get some fresh bodies out there. Breslin will dump it back the other way. 39 seconds left on the Phoenix power play. Chicago's penalty killers have come to life tonight and in the last three games. Wiseman with a poke. Loose puck. Tim Breslin tried to sweep it out, and he did. Got a good roll along those boards. Snell blocked by Wiseman, but picked up by Kevin Brown. Back for Chris Snell. There's Snell with 13 goals on the air. Can't get by. And a swipe at him was taken by Roberts. I didn't see if Snell had started at first, but Roberts doesn't usually do that. So my thought would have been that he was provoked, but let's see. I well, I think Gordy Roberts is going to be the only one that's going to yeah. get a penalty right here. And I tell you, it's a... It's a situation right there where Gordy Roberts has got to keep his cool. 
right here. Schnell tries to go around Roberts right there. Oh, and Schnell gives him the big sort of left forearm, and Gordy Roberts uh, gives it back to him. But there's coincidental penalties. Both men are going to go to the boxes, so it's not going to hurt him. I didn't see it initially. I saw Roberts, but Roberts doesn't usually instigate it on something like that. Yeah, Gordy certainly uh, knows how to contain his temper and, and keep his cool. So, you know, right there is unusual. Room for one more. That's half your defense in there. Duffy, Roberts, and McDonald are all in the box. Half of your defense. So, more minutes for Ted Crowley and Sean Rivers. I think on a night like tonight, I don't think the, the other defensemen are going to mind it too much as long as it's not for an extended period of time. You know, they're well rested right now. They've had lots of time off through the All-Star break. And uh, this situation here, I'm sure they don't mind it one bit. Four complete days off. Right side circle, played across by Chapman and then deflected wide. Vashon paid the price, picked up now by Chicago. And they bust out. They killed off that last penalty. Harkins to Davidson, wide. Phoenix gets a good bounce, but Rivers is there. Block, Roadrunners bring it in on side, nice pass. McReynolds in front, save! When the young robs Vashon, who almost tipped it by. Great stuff for Wendell Young, who's getting better as the game gets older. Well, I tell you right there, Wendell Young certainly showing that he's in a groove and got some great concentration. It's a beautiful pass right across to, to uh, McReynolds, to Vashon, and he just one tips it. McReynolds is going to pick it up right here. He's going to make a great little one-time pass to Vashon, break into the net. Wendell Young sees it all the way. He makes a fantastic stack pad save. And he's really looked fabulous in there tonight, JP. He's a guy that only played nine games last year in Tampa Bay because of shoulder problems, and he's already tripled that this year in Chicago. And trying to assert himself here with the Wolves. Chicago was fortunate that Tampa could not place him in Atlanta because that's where most of Tampa's players go, but Tampa already had a couple of good goaltenders in Atlanta. And through their friendship with Gino Briaco, Tampa sends him here. Here's Harkins shooting it in wide. And the whistle, apparently, that was tied up in the netting. And now Gillingham, after the whistle, not much room left in those penalty boxes, guys. But Gillingham, they're going to find room for him. Well, he's going to take both men right here. The referee is certainly trying to take control of the game here where he's saying to these guys, I'm not going to put up with any baloney. I'm going to, if you guys want to fool around, you're going to go. Look at that stat. 5-0-2 when Gillingham scores a goal. Is that a good luck charm or what? Well, I tell you, you're, going to hope, you're certainly going to bet that all the players on the team wish he scored 20 or 30 more of those goals this year. That's always great. I mean, it's as players, you have such a camaraderie with each other, and there's a lot of joking that goes around in the dressing room and stuff. And you can bet that Gillingham, when guys sort of tease him about his skating, because he's not the prettiest skater in the world, and things like that. But after tonight, when they win this hockey game, they'll be 6-0-2. So he's going to be able to have something to throw back at them, saying, hey, we're an undefeated team when I score some goals, so you guys should be setting me up more. And you know what? I thought the referee pointed at him to go off. He didn't. It was just O'Donnell. I thought it was at least one of each team, but Gillingham escaped the box. So here's Chicago, one for three in the power play tonight, with a chance to perhaps bury Phoenix here, even though there's plenty of time left. Around the boards it goes, kept in by Crowley, but the puck is dancing. Here's Phoenix, shorthanded. Right side, Tomlinson, backhand put behind the net. Wiseman chasing. 15,569. Watching this one here in Chicago. First home game after the All-Star break. Harkins will chase this one down. Yax leaves it off. Wiseman and Harkins are there. Malte behind the net. Swept at it. Here's Tomlinson. 116 on the Wolves. Power play. Dumped down ice. Rowley to Rivers. Man advantage. Chicago dumped it around the boards. Malte first man there. Wiseman. Out of the right point, and Crowley didn't get good one on that. Vachon. Three on two and make it four on three, shorthanded. Roadrunners win it. Check thrown there at the end. By Wiseman. Coming right back the other way. Here's Malte at the circle. The shot, and went short side. Some of the crowd thought it was in. Hit the side netting. All the way down ice. Young will settle it down. 34 seconds left in the power play. Sean Rivers picks it up. 
Secord. Across the center line, Al Secord with it on the off wing. Tried to dump it in, it was blocked and cleared out by Chapman. The Wolves chase it down. Duffy's penalty has expired. We have five minutes for fighting and then a two minute minor. So we had to sit out seven minutes. Courtney gave it up to Secord. Along the far side boards, power play, running out of time, two seconds left, and here's Phoenix coming back the other way. Across the line, McReynolds, Chris Crosser. Rags the puck, kills the clock, penalty's over. Tomlinson took a high stick right in front of the referee with a bad spot. And this could be a tough one. If blood were drawn there and they ever decided to go with five minutes, look out, but we'll wait until the referee makes that decision right there with Lee Davidson. Going off two for high sticking, Tomlinson. We'll come back with a Phoenix power play. It doesn't look like there's any damage done. Stick around. It's Will Talkie on Sports Channel. Checkers, the hamburger place that brought you the big quarter pound award-winning all-beef champ burger, now brings you the most exciting new sandwich in town. Introducing Checkers, new hickory smoked chicken club, a grilled chicken breast, sizzling strips of bacon, topped with our one-of-a-kind hickory smoke recipe that'll bring you back for more. But hurry, it's only here for a limited time. Checkers, new hickory smoked chicken club. cities in Mexico than any other U.S. airline. It's more airline for your money. Well, the Wolves lead. Davidson certainly gets off lucky, and he, here he gets a two-minute penalty for high sticking right there on Tomlinson. And it's a good thing that he didn't draw blood because right now with 12 minutes to go in the hockey game and Phoenix down by two goals, if they get a five-minute major power play, the chances of them getting at least one goal would certainly increase. So with them only having a two-minute power play here, I like the Wolves' chances. Especially with Phoenix having the second-best power play in the league, although as that graphic aptly stated, Phoenix is open for tonight. But a five-minute power play changes things. This is only two minutes and less now with 1.43 to go on it. Berglund out there. He gets a lot of minutes in terms of penalty killing. But Tim Berglund's very dependable for Chicago. He and Multe start out up top, and they work well with each other. They certainly do. They seem to know where each other are on the ice most times. And they do a great job working in sync on the, the penalty kill. And it's great to see Tim Berglund's a guy you don't hear a lot of sometimes. But he certainly does the job when they're called upon. Another penalty coming up as Chevalier shot that one wide. I think he had his glove slashed off. Chicago now will touch. And there's the big slash call there. Fans, stop by the so, Chicago are not doing themselves any favors here. They're making it much harder to walk away with, a, with what could be a fairly easy or safe home ice victory. Well, they're certainly giving Phoenix every opportunity to get back in the game right here, JP. The river, or the penalty is going to be called on Sean Rivers. And they're going to come in across the line right here. And Rivers is going to follow the guy going wide. And I think it's Chevalier, and there he lays the two-hander on him right there. And I tell you, those are the stinger right there. Your hand goes numb and your glove just falls right off because you got no control of your hand. So actually a pretty good call by the referee right there. Glove went flying. I didn't see from my angle when I originally called it that slash, but you could certainly see it there. I've been known to have a penalty or two like that in my career. Uh, a penalty or two? Yeah, you know, once or twice I slashed a guy, you know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't too often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 11.15 remaining in this game in Chicago, leading by two as Al Secord and Gene Riaco have spent many years in the game. Talk this one over. A reminder, coming up here on Sports Channel, tomorrow, late night, 11 p.m., come out to the game and then watch yourselves on television later on Friday, next Friday at San Diego, and then next Saturday at Phoenix. Both late night starts on Sports Channel. And a reminder, if you'd like to be part of a crowd like this, better than 15,500 are watching this one, 
The number to call is at the bottom of your screen. Ticketmaster, 312-559-1212. Good seats still available. For tomorrow night's game, you can pick them up at the Rosemont Horizon box office, Chicago Land locations of Carson Perry Scott, Blockbuster Music, Rose Records, Tower Records, and Hot Ticks. And Wolves tickets this year are, in fact, Hot Ticks. So it's a two-man power play. A lot of open ice now for Phoenix, and really for the Phoenix Roadrunners, this is the game here. This is the hockey game right here. It can be a great momentum builder for the Wolves, or it can be a great momentum builder for Phoenix, because if they score one, they've still got the opportunity to get another one. Stuck around the boards by Wendell Young. 57 seconds left in the two-man power play for Phoenix. The lone man up top is Berglund for Chicago. It's five on three. Right side, right in front and missing. An open chance was missing after his leg brought right in front nicely by Perot. Well, that's where Yannick Perot's at his best right there. He's got great hands, sees the ice so well. He saw the open man, perfect opportunity. And checking the far boards and Wendell Young snaps it in midair, dropping Snell, but how about that hit on the far side? Great hit by Jack Duffy right there, follows through on the check. Actually, on a play like that, you almost take yourself out of the, the game. You don't really want that to happen on a five-on-three situation, but right there, it presents itself perfectly. Solid hit right there by Jack Duffy. But you follow the play along, and they're going to hit Schnell with a nice little pass where he's going to have a one-timer for Wendell Young Rob. You know, if you're keeping score at home, that's our second good candidate for our checkers check of the game. We saw one earlier in the first period. We'll let the guys in the truck decide that as Jack Duffy and Gina Briaco talk things over. That's one of these deals where you say, you know, I don't want you to take yourself out of the play there, but you know, nice hit, kid. I don't think you can ever fault the kid for trying. He's out there working really hard, and he makes a great check. Here's a shot, and Wendell Young sees it clean. Stick it away. Here's Snell. Two-man power play for another 16 seconds. Snell gave it up. Far side. Snell wants it back. Instead, it goes to Schwab. Pass is too soft. McDonald battling in the corner against two players. Kevin McDonald going down. Now it's picked up to Parole. Phoenix with it behind the net. One penalty's over. Davidson's back on. Out to Snell. Open at the circle. Sticked away by Young. And somehow he got a rebound. Wendell Young, razor sharp, and he's keeping Chicago right there. What's that? No call. Right after the whistle. Messi sent someone looking for frequent flyer miles. Who was that the there for? Well, I, know, I think it's Davidson. Maybe gets checked from behind right there. Jack Crowley's. Hey, Crowley. Right here, Wendell Young gets. You can see that he's got a great opportunity. He's seen the puck so well, and if you ask a goaltender. When he's in a groove, he's going to think, here's the shot after the whistle right here. Vessi gives Crowley the little shot. I think Vessi's very frustrated. He had two or three opportunities in that five-on-three power play to score a goal. And he's receiving a penalty for what he did right there, which actually is, I think is a pretty good call by the referee. It's a good call. It's uh, ten minutes late, isn't it? I don't think he stopped the play for that. His arm was not in the air for that, so perhaps the linesman said something. Who knows? But when that whistle had sounded, there was no arm in the air. 10-12 boarding on Vesey. Chicago will take it. Gladly. Well, Wendell, getting back to Wendell Young, when a goaltender's in the groove, he'll tell you that, you know, the puck is very, it's uh, four inches across and I think two inches high. And uh, when they're in a the groove, a goaltender will tell you it's like a beach ball sometimes. They think it, it, to them, it looks as big as a beach ball. And that's the way, the kind of groove that Wendell Young looks like he's in right now. Roberts gives it up. It's a 3-1 game. Here's Nardella. Fires it. It's partially blocked by Snell. It's four skaters aside for another 13 seconds. And Chicago will have about a minute 20 or so in the power play. And an offside is called. It's getting a little bit chippy there with some things happening right after the whistle. A little frustration setting in here. But it's very important that the Wolves turn the others, turn the cheek. Some nights you got to, you know, eat a little throw sometimes when you've got a bit, you know, you got a two-goal lead here. You can't let somebody antagonize you into taking an unnecessary penalty and putting your seat your team down. Take the guy's number. Hey, you play them next weekend. You can always get the guy back next weekend if the game's out of hand or early in the hockey game if you want to try and prove a point when you're on the road. So there's no, obviously here, the Wolves got to do that. Was that hard for you to turn the other cheek? How hard was it? 
Well, sometimes, you know, sometimes you just kind of don't, but, uh, <laughs> you know, there's certainly a lot of times I did, and, you know, a lot of people do. It's, it's uh, you got to think of the team a lot of times. I had to ask. Most definitely. Fans who followed your career were waiting for me to ask that question. Here's <laughs> Chicago with a man advantage now. Multe over the line. 3-1 Chicago lead. Harkins to Rivers. Sean Rivers center point. Right side it comes. Crowley keeping it alive into the corner. Multe who's got two goals for the Wolves. Gillingham has the other. Here's Phoenix taking it away shorthanded. 103 left in the power play for the Wolves. He could really make things difficult now for Phoenix if they could score one here on the power play. Would certainly put the last nail in the coffin right here. Rivers with speed over the line. Breaks on. Now to Multe at the circle. Multe off the boards. Wiseman holding. The rookie from Michigan back to Multe. That's blocked by Levine. Levine cranks it up. Can't clear out of the zone. Rivers kept it in well to Crowley. Crowley flipping it. Tip wide. Multe after it. Multe kicks it free. Here's Wiseman holding. Here's Harkins. Save. Rebound. Harkins blocks it so that Rivers can keep it in. Multe behind the net, lets it go for Wiseman. Smart play to the right point, that was a blind pass, but he saw Crowley there. Wiseman again to Multe, right across deflected Phoenix dumps. I'll tell you, the Wolves right there, showing great patience on the power play, moving the puck around well, and I'll tell you, you're just running off time on the clock. If you don't get a goal, it's not a big deal, because you're wasting time on the clock and wearing out the other team. I've got to say, you don't like to see the blind pass made, but Wiseman knew Crowley was there, there was no doubt. Behind the net, cleared right up the middle by Sean O'Donnell. And it's an icing because the power play had ended. We've got 7.33 to go in the game, and the Wolves are still leading it. 3-1 is going to get Nick Kemper back for his second stint with his team. Released earlier, sent to Charlotte. Must have worked hard enough to get a recall of this team, and he's back out there getting some ice time. Well, you certainly got to give a kid credit when, you know, things don't look good a lot of times when you get sent down to the next lower level down. And uh, he obviously kept his, his head about him and he worked hard and he got the opportunity to come back and uh, he certainly is, hasn't looked out of place since he's been back. Chicago, almost unbeatable when they lead after two periods. Kemper, by the way, is from the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, so not a big college hockey power, but... Got some good numbers there. And you know, he was brought back not because they had problems on defense in terms of injuries or were cutting several players. So they just brought him back there, gave him another chance. Al Secord looking on. Has had many great nights in a Chicago uniform, be it Blackhawks or now Wolves. Off the draw, picked up. Here's O'Donnell. Courtney trying to keep it alive in the attacking end. Neutral ice. Nice crisp pass, McReynolds, double team, Seacord in there. Donald was there as well. Kemper, that was, back the other way. Big shot! Yaks, robbing Davidson. Davidson's had a couple of good chances tonight. He certainly used his speed a lot of times to break in some openings to get some opportunities to score the goal. Kemper knocking it away, checks his man of the boards. Here's Chicago with Davidson. Lee Davidson. Once property, the Winnipeg Jets will dump it back the other way. 6.47 to play. It's important now that Chicago will change up wisely. Get fresh players out there at all times. This is their game. It's theirs to win, theirs to lose. But right now, they've got that two-goal lead. And you know, Phoenix can also pull their goaltender as we get nearer to the end. Get that extra attack on. Here's Rivers. Chris pass to Breslin. Across the center line. Here's Tim Breslin. He's got some wheels going. Breslin being hooked from behind, kept it alive, pass back, dangerous, Rivers kept it in, and then it's deflected upstairs. Well, right there, Todd Harkins, not a very smart play. He got a two-goal lead right here in the last six minutes of the hockey game, and he's making a very dangerous pass up the middle in the offensive zone. Keep the puck on the boards. Make them come and take the puck away from you. You're the ones that are in control right here. Let them, you know, that's what, you grind it out in the corners, that's what's going to win the hockey games for you. You don't try to get more that's not there. Don't try and create that's not there. And right there they got away with it. They were lucky that uh, Rivers uh, kept it in play. Point per game over the last 17 games, but not as much over the last five, six games for Todd Harkins. 
Harkins has played center and right wing for this team this year. Strong play. Now I think Todd Harkins has played a lot of hockey this year that he maybe hasn't done in the last two years. So I think the All-Star break's done him a world of good, and you're going to see him bounce back in the second half and play very strong for this Wolf team. Harkins chasing. Harkins one of three Wolves with over 100 penalty minutes. Phoenix has three as well on their side. Over the line. Roadrunners. Levine blocked. Here's Breslin picking it up. Chicago's going to be focused on playing some disciplined hockey for the last 5.45. They don't need any more goals, but they certainly don't want to give any up. There's a one-goal game here. Could change things if Phoenix scores. Straight up the middle. Roadrunners with Brown. Busted up. Cleared by Chicago out of the zone. Brought back by Snell, who dumps it in. That was almost an offside. Wiseman and Brown had some words. 5.22 to go. Third period. Wolves trying to throw this crowd at better than 15-5, and they're doing it so far. Right across in front, the pass back. One pass too many. Wiseman could have shot that puck instead of for Berglund. I think that's one knock against Brian Wiseman is he doesn't shoot the puck enough. He gets opportunities to do it, but he doesn't. Drops it back. Multi-block. Wiseman trying to kick it. Smart play. Try to kick it forward. Keep that puck alive. Kemper. Curves it back the other end. Phoenix with it. Snell. 4.43 to go. Third period. Chicago up 3-1. to Two by Multi. One by Gillingham. Team has an unbelievable record when Gillingham scores a goal, and that would continue if they win this game. 5 0 2. Nardella blocked. Along the right boards, kept in by Chicago, taken by Chapman for Phoenix. Don't forget, Cleveland's in tomorrow night. Same deal, a 7 p.m. start here at the Rosemont Horizon. Into the corner. Solid Rivers check. Back in neutralized, Phoenix chasing it. We're approaching four minutes to play, and the Wolves fans are howling now. Four minutes away from victory with a 3-1 lead. Yannick Perot has the only goal the other way, and you know what? Wendell Young has shut the door ever since the 4-0-3 mark of the first period. He's been brilliant. Here's Chapman at center. Brian Chapman will bring it back in over the line. Edgerton sends it around the boards. Nardella will pick it up. Breakout pass to Breslin over the center line. Jim Breslin checked to the boards. Harkins with a follow-up. Runs into his man, but Phoenix tries to bring it back. Instead, Ted Crowley is there, the former member of the Olympic team for the United States. Gets some help from Duffy, who flips it out. Over the line, offside. Breslin was ahead of Harkins on the play. 3.17 to go. Come back with us, see if the Wolves can hang on. If they win it, it'll be two straight at home with Cleveland coming in tomorrow. We'll be back. She'll try to drown you. She'll try to freeze you. She'll try to burn you. She'll try to blow you away. But she will not succeed. The Nissan Pathfinder. Attendance here tonight. Tons of them. Welcome back, everyone. It's 3 1 Chicago leading over Phoenix, part of the 15,000 plus on hand tonight. How many will we have tomorrow? Come out and find out. Cleveland versus Chicago tomorrow night. Ticket information. Call the number on your screen 312 559 1212. Watch the game tomorrow night at 11 p.m. on Sports Channel. Watch Todd Gillingham and company. When Gillingham scores, this team is 5-0-2. Soon to be 6-0-2 if they hold on. And Chicago's problems at home, well, they've never won back-to-back -back home games. We'll let you know if that's three ends in 3-0-9. They have a chance to make it three straight when they take on Cleveland. Got to win those home games, especially when you're competitive on the road, and they're more than competitive with a game above 500 there. Out at the left circle now, Straub. Tipped in front, it's loose. 
score. Hold on. I believe it was Kevin Brown that tipped that in front, but there were two players against Ted Crowley, and the numbers won out that time for Phoenix. It's 3-2. Well, right there, Kevin Brown tipped in the, the second rebound. It comes out to the point. Just some sloppy play in their own end. They figured, oh, the game's over. Maybe we can just relax these last couple minutes. But Phoenix is a proud hockey team. They're not going to lay down and die. They're going to fight right to the end. And right here, it's just a simple play at the net. It's tipped in front. It's two against one in front of the Wolves' net. And Kevin Brown just sneaks it by the post in the foot of Wendell Young. And it's a 3-2 hockey game. So hold on to your hats here, folks. 15th goal of the year for Kevin Brown. And that changes things. It's a 3-2 game, 2.44 to go. And now it adds a little more meaning to pulling your goaltender. Down by one. Young had not been beaten since 4-3 of the first period, but tough to fall from there. Berglund leaves it off. Here's Wiseman getting room. Wiseman, Malte, shot saved. He was ready for the hat trick. I think he fanned on his shot a little bit. I think the puck might have flipped up off his stick just as he's going to let it go. Otherwise, he would have been right there for the hat trick. Here's Malte onside with a foot behind the net. On the boards, Bessie, bothered by Wiseman. Back into neutral ice. Snell, it's deflected wide of Wendell Young, who will settle it and deaden it for Roberts to Seacourt. Right back to Gordy Roberts, partially fanned behind the net. Chicago scrambling now in the road end. Phoenix putting on the heat. Long distance, kept in the back hitter. Wendell Young's got it. And when you've got it, and you know it's there somewhere, you don't hear move and he didn't move. I'll tell you, Wendell Young right now, he looks a little like he's a little hot right now at his players saying, come on guys, you know, I held you guys in this game a little bit tonight, and now you're slacking off. We got to get right back right here. See, the puck's going to be stopped by Kemper. Little backhand right there. Wendell Young hangs on, but you can see him right there. He's barking at his players saying, let's get going. Wiseman with a nice little move here. He's going to drop back on the short side. Malte. And he just, you see the puck flipping as it's going towards the goaltender. Obviously it flipped up on his stick as he's going to let it go. And at the close of the game, watch players like Steve Malte and see how much ice time they get. Right now, Gina Bianca wants Malte out there. McDonald and Rivers are the defensemen. Bergman will take this important draw. Davidson also out there. So they got the righty Bergman in for this faceoff. Off the draw. Won by Phoenix. Into the corner it goes, centering pass, loosens some skates, and Young blocked it on the short side. That one could have gone in from a bad angle. Third out of neutral ice. They dodged the bullet right there. They almost got caught again, being out man in their own zone and right close to their net, which is a big no-no at this point of the hockey game. Brown slid it across. He had a chance, I thought, to shoot. Kept it at the point. Chicago now with a block. In deep, down off the boards. Volte looking to clear it out. Kept it at the right point. Perot off a of teammate skate in front. That was Chevalier. There's Davidson. Yax is still in goal. Less than a minute to go. And Yax is looking at the bench. Here's Kevin Brown. Block off the glove of McDonald. Yax looking all the way. McDonald lays a check there. The puck's still loose. McDonald falls down on it. And I would would think that this would be the end for Yaks with a face-off deep the other way. He's not going off in a hurry, but he's going. Yeah, I think you're going to see a timeout right here by Coach Robbie Laird. And he's going to try and set up a little bit of a play, probably, to try and get an opportunity to tie this hockey game up in the last 45 seconds right here. Huge draw right here for Chicago. They've got to get a face-off man out there to win a face-off. Well, the good thing about the timeout, too, is that if you want to keep the same players out there, they can catch a little breather, and you can keep those guys out there, because it's critical now for a team like Chicago that struggled at home. They really have to win this. Very important that they do this. I think it's going to build confidence in each and every one of the players that, hey, good, we're starting a streak at home. We had a little bit of a downtime here at the end, but overall we played a pretty good hockey game, so this is very important for them right here to win a faceoff and win the game. He's got Todd Harkins to take this draw. Wiseman is out there as well, and now he's got Berglund out there, so maybe Berglund's going to take it. Yeah, Berglund's coming up. Well, Chicago's got too many men right here on the ice, so they better get one off there right away. There goes Wiseman. Berglund, I think, is going to take the draw here. Breslin also out there. 
Roberts on defense, along with Kemper. Kemper along the boards. Wolves look to clear it out. Brown kept it in. It's deflected. Flipped out of the zone. Good clearance by Ted Berglund. 34 seconds left. 3-2 Chicago. Phoenix coming back. Near side. Yannick Perot with a flip pass. Bail out. Tomlinson a split. Blocked by Chicago. Roberts trying to poke at it. Kicks it away. Breslin. Backhand flip kick. Clear it out once. Twice. It's kept in by Phoenix. 11 seconds left in the game. It's front score. Phoenix ties. With 7.2 seconds. Now give Phoenix credit. They worked very hard. Chicago, though, could not clear the puck, and they had several chances on that far side. Well, right there, you've got to be tough in your own zone in the last few minutes. Anything counts, and they don't get it out. And a nice pass across to Tomlinson sneaking in. But right there, a mistake by a young fella, Mick Kemper. A lot of times, you've got position on the man, but you've got to tie his stick and keep his stick up off the ice. If Tomlinson doesn't have his stick on the ice right there, the puck goes by the net, and the Wolves win the hockey game. But as it sits now, we're looking at a shootout. Seven seconds left in the game. 1953, the time of the Tomlinson goal. So, here's Rivers. We're going to go to the shootout. And the interesting thing, you've got to think about Wendell Young's psyche here. He has played a magnificent game. Absolutely magnificent. And you've got to wonder where mentally you start thinking. Can't win at home, can't win at home. He's done everything he could to win this game, and now he's going to win the shootout to get a win tonight. That's got to be frustrating for Wendell Young, but he's going to be the first guy to get his composure now, and he looks all right here. I'm sure Wendell Young's going to be just fine. He's a veteran goaltender. He's been in some pressure situations many times before, so this to him is just another situation. I'm just sure that he's very upset with his teammates for letting him down because he played a fabulous game in net tonight, and they should have won this hockey game, and you see right there the first Frustration showing. He's yep. very upset with his teammates because they kind of bailed out on him in the last two minutes of the game, and uh, now we're in a shootout situation. I'm really thinking all the way. It's going to be a 3-1 game. Young's average goes down. He gets the win. Now if he gets the win, still giving up three goals. He still played well, but he's going to have to work at it. Here are the rules. I, I think Chicago fans know them by now because nobody's in more shootouts than these guys. Five players from each team. You alternate. The goaltenders may not shoot. They can't change ends. If you go to the second shootout, it's a sudden death for the second round. And you don't count these goals scored in the individual stats. So if Perot gets a goal, it is not his 44. He stays at 43. I like the shootout myself. Well, I tell you, I wish the governors of the National Hockey League would take a look at the shootout format because if you look at every, each and every hockey fan that's still in the building here tonight, it's a very exciting way to end a hockey game. People spend a lot of money and they don't like to go home with a tie. So this way, it brings a lot more excitement to the game and the, and the losing team still gets a point out of it. You know, I don't have the numbers, obviously, but not a lot of people have went to the parking lots. When it was 3-1, maybe they thought about it, but then 3-2, they stayed. Most of the 15,000, it seems like, are here, or at least a very good portion of that, as we get ready for the shootout. Well, the fans of Chicago are, are, are very, you know, intense and loyal hockey fans, and they don't leave early. They like to see the action all the way through, and you got to give them a lot of credit because they're fabulous fans, best in the world. There is your shootout records as we start it. First one, entered it against Young, and a score. Phoenix. Well, entered in right there. I think Warren Young's upset with himself. Obviously, I don't think that he was quite ready when this started. I think he was wanted maybe a little more time to get himself back composed. Ryan Wiseman to shoot. The lefty walks into the goaltender. Yak save. Well, I tell you, Yak. He's been, uh, gave up those couple of goals, but he shut the door in the third period. And right there, a little bit of an advantage right here so far. Well, mind you, only two shooters, still got four to go on each side. Wiseman, one of their better shooters at 40% of the shootout. Back the other way, Kevin Brown. He scored a big goal to make it 3-2, walking in on Wendell Young with a shot up high. 
Well, right there, Brown tries to, the old saying, go high or go home, and uh, he looks like he's going to be going home because he was a little too high. You're so clever. Here's Malte. Malte is 3 for 11 in the shootout, but he's been hot. Here he comes, walking it on goal. And he shot it high and wide. Malte with a miss. It's 1 nothing. Phoenix after well, right two. there, Malte looks like he had the goaltender beat cleanly. The goalie gets the wrong way, but Malte shoots it over the net. Yannick Perot is next. Phoenix up 1 nothing as Perot goes in on Young. Perot with a deep. Young with a save, and that may have caught a piece of the pipe. Couldn't tell from this angle, but Young had it smothered. Well, right there, great save, Wendell Young. Great concentration. He knows that he's up against. Probably the hottest scorer, or obviously the leading scorer in the, net, in the International League. Here's Rivers, he's two for four, 50 percent, the deep, the shot, and the flip he missed. Sean Rivers. Wolves are running out of time here, it's one nothing here, Phoenix. Well, I tell you, Yak has certainly come through, and uh, got to give him a lot of credit, he's certainly done the job. Here's Messi, Messi versus Young, the right-handed shooter, Messi back in to score. And let's look at the mathematics. Chicago needs to score two and stop Phoenix or they don't get in. They lose this game at home. Well, that's Secord. has got some pressure on him right here. Secord coming through. Secord shot it too high. Phoenix has won the game. Incredible as that may seem, if you've tuned in all night on Sports Channel, Phoenix has defeated the Chicago Wolves here at home. This is a stunner. Well, I'll tell you, right now, Wendell Young is one upset goaltender, and he's got every right to be because his, his players let him down in the last couple of minutes of the hockey game, and I think the frustration showed where in the shootout, maybe he was a little bit uh, out of sync, but uh, his teammates certainly didn't uh, hold the fort for him when he, need, when, they, when he needed them. Sorry. This has got to be the most frustrating home loss this year because of the way they played, the way the game went, the positive things that they had going. They were about six minutes away from a victory and couldn't shut it down. A reminder, tonight's Wolves game is sponsored in part by Checkers. One taste of your hours. And by Nissan, the official import car of the Chicago Wolves. And by Continental Light, more airline for your money. We'll come back and we'll wrap it up. It's been a strange night here in Chicago. Being keeps it in. I don't like the way the Wolves have come out of this period. But Young has done it in front of Cruz at the side of the net. Young didn't see it. Here's Courtney back over the center line. And finally, the puck is that way. Dumped into the zone. Chicago's going to recover and have a much better next shift. Who's ever out there? That was bad. Well, they certainly haven't come out and showed what they did in the first period. They've got to bounce back early because this is a team that can strike fast and furiously. And so far, they've come out quickly. And if they give up a goal now, they're going to be in some big trouble. VC's pass is blocked. Levine straight up the middle. Oh, Levine's stick handles almost through. And then he's crunched on a double hit. Roberts in there along with Duncan. Davidson. Courtney. Now to Nardell over the line. Nardell fires it. And Defoe again looked sluggish when he made that save. Well, I tell you, that was a great little shot there by Bobby Nardelli. He and tonight in Phoenix, they'll need solid goaltending. They've had it all year on the road from Wendell Young. And tonight, Wendell faces the top offense of the IHL. Well, Wendell certainly has jumped out and played very well on the road this season. Nine of his 11 wins have come on the road. So tonight, he's got to be sharp. There's... Phoenix team here is a very transitional team. They go from the defense to the offense very good. They move the puck well. They've got some speed, and they've got some great scoring, because then they're number one in the league in goals for. And they've got the two top scorers in the league. Look for them to fly tonight. We're talking about Yannick Perot and Rob Brown. Well, Yannick Pro certainly is. He's number one scorer in the, in the IHL this season, and he's on a 17-game point streak right now. And I'll tell you, he's just flying and looking very, really, very good. Tough to stop. Also, they've got Rob Brown. He's the number two scorer in the league, and he's on an 11-game streak right now, JP. And he just got sent down from the Los Angeles Kings because he was recalled at the end of the lockout. So he's looking forward tonight to coming back and maybe showing the Kings that he indeed could certainly help their team offensively. One sour note before we get started, Al Secord will miss his second straight game because of flu-like symptoms. It's the Wolves and the Roadrunners, though, next from Phoenix.
Tonight's Chicago Wolves game is sponsored in part by Checkers. One taste in your hours. And by Nissan, the official import car of the Chicago Wolves. And by Continental Light. More airlines for your money. Welcome back, everyone, to Phoenix. Just in time for our national anthem. We'll go down to ice level.